Hello everybody, I'm the Amazing Atheist, and yes, I did shave my mustache off. I think I kind of look like a werewolf now. <laughs> yeah, I feel that. Anyway, on to the actual subject matter of this video. Um, I am about to use someone's death to uh, further a political agenda, and that's not wrong, by the way. Uh, using the example of someone's tragic story to prevent future tragedies is called learning from your mistakes. And uh, it's something that Americans and people elsewhere across the world are not too comfortable with, learning from mistakes. We kind of prefer to cloister ourselves away in the la-la box. That's where you go, la-la-la-la-la-la! If I can't see it or hear it, it doesn't exist! Sometimes it takes a tragedy to get people to actually peek their little heads out of the box and be like, is there something going on here? Uh, it takes a tragedy. And uh, the uh, suicide of transgender teen Leela Alcorn is a tragedy. It's a tragedy because it was so easy to avoid. It very much should have been avoided. Now, I'm making the presumption here that you're uh, familiar with Leela's story, but if you're not, the link is in the description down below. I recommend you read that before you watch this. Um, a lot of people have been searching for a culprit in Leela's death. I mean, it was a suicide. She killed herself. But some people are wondering why that decision was made in the first place. And her suicide note makes her parents an obvious target. Uh, these are a few choice excerpts from Leela's suicide note that caught my eye. When I was 14, I learned what transgender meant and cried of happiness. After 10 years of confusion, I finally understood who I was. I immediately told my mom and she reacted extremely negatively, telling me it was a phase, that I would never truly be a girl, that God doesn't make mistakes, that I am wrong. Now the four words that particularly caught my attention, and maybe it's just because I'm the amazing atheist, were, uh, God doesn't make mistakes. My mom started taking me to a therapist, but it would only take me to Christian therapists who were all very biased. So I never actually got the therapy I needed to cure me of my depression. I only got more Christians telling me that I was selfish and wrong, and that I should look to God for help. Christian therapists, look to God for help. God doesn't make mistakes. Hmm. And what was it that Leela's mom and dad said after her suicide? They said uh, of Leela being transgender, we don't support that. Then they said another word. Does anyone want to take a guess what that word was? I'll tell you, it was we don't support that Religiously. Religiously. Curious word. Very curious word. Christian therapists look to God for help. God doesn't make mistakes. We don't support that religiously. I don't think you need to be Sherlock Holmes to detect this pattern, folks. It's right out there in the open. Christianity is explicitly indicted in Leela's suicide note, and it's further indicted by the stupid words of her imbecilic parents. Um, and it's not hidden. This is not some hidden message. It's right out there in the open. And yet people continue to spew this line of rhetoric that we can't blame religion for this. Maybe not entirely. Of course not entirely. There's always a confluence of factors present in every situation. But are we really going to deny that religion played a part in this. Leela's parents continue to refer to Leela as their son, continue to refer to her as Josh, continue to use male pronouns when describing her. And maybe you don't see why that's a big deal, but if you don't, then I would encourage you to endeavor to learn more about transgender people because you're not just attacking some incidental characteristic you're attacking something that's part of the core of their identity. And uh, you would hope that losing their child would have opened Doug and Carla Alcorn's eyes to what fools they had been, but instead they seem to be cloistered away in the aforementioned la-la ba box going la-la-la-la-la-la-la-la-la-la-la-la. 
God will take care of us. La la la. Back to the subject of religion. Let's take another look at some of those key phrases we were singling out earlier, like, God doesn't make mistakes. And this next portion of the video, I'm going to direct uh, right at Doug and Carla Alcorn, Leela's parents. So first of all, Carla and Doug, there is no God, and if you would just accept that, this entire conversation would be a lot easier. But second of all, even if you do believe in God, how can you possibly be of the opinion that he doesn't make mistakes? I mean, what about conjoined twins, right? What about Harlequin babies? You think it was part of God's plan for a baby to be born all fucked up, suffer for a few days, and then die? You really think that that was something that was his desired outcome? What about Sean Hannity? Come on. No loving God would allow such a creature to exist. Third of all, transgender people have demonstrable neurological differences that can be looked at and measured. We don't know why people are transgender, but we see the evidence of it. Uh, not just by taking their word for it about who they are, but also by looking at documented, measurable, scientific evidence. This evidence, by the way, is accessible to anyone who is just willing to do a simple Google search. That's all you have to do. It's not hard. This is not hidden in a fucking fortress guarded by fucking demon warriors from the 17th realm. All you have to do is type in transgender in fucking Google. Read a few fucking pages. But instead of turning to Google, Carla and Doug turn to the fucking Bible. Instead of turning to real therapists, they sent her to Christian therapists. Let me ask you a question, guys. Did you also try witch doctors? Shaman? Maybe get some voodoo going? You say you don't support trans people religiously, Carla and Doug. Well, reality doesn't support your religion. So let it go and just admit it to yourself that your daughter was neither a, a sinner or God's mistake that bullshit false dichotomy that you've created in your minds, but instead was just a person who was trying to tell you something, and you didn't listen, and now she's dead. That's all I have to say to Carla and Doug, but I have a few more things to say to the rest of you watching this video, and it concerns uh, maybe the flip side, you would say, to this issue, the cult of Leela, um, post all over social media, Tumblr, Twitter, acting like Leela was a, a saint that could do no wrong. And uh, let's set aside the debate about whether or not suicide is uh, inherently selfish. Let's just put that away. We, we, all, we, we all know that debate. We've all had that debate probably at one point or another with somebody. So that's not useful to us. Let's just set that aside. Let's just focus on Leela's method of suicide. She ran in front of a truck. Now think about that for a second. Uh, what if this truck had swerved to avoid hitting her and crashed into somebody else? Even setting that aside, I don't know about you, but if I was a truck driver and I ran into somebody, that would be quite the traumatic event in my life. I think I would have trouble getting over that. I remember one time I hit a fucking cat. I still fucking wake up sometimes in the middle of the night like, God, that poor cat. Imagine if it was a fucking person, a young person with their whole fucking future ahead of them. It's kind of a shitty thing to impose on somebody else just because you're having trouble dealing with your life. So, uh, did Leela just not consider those consequences or did she simply not care? Either way, it does suggest a certain degree of selfishness. We shouldn't be lifting people up on pedestals and acting like they were flawless just because their deaths were tragic. And I'm not saying this to disparage Leela in any way, shape, or form. Teenagers tend to be selfish. Uh, and I want to say that there's much to admire about Leela. That's, we wouldn't care if, if she was just some piece of shit. She obviously was an intelligent person. You see how she wrote with such eloquence. She had a profound grasp of what was going on around her. Very good situational awareness. She knew herself and was confident in her identity. 
Uh, but let's not get so lost in admiration and veneration of one person that we lose sight of a very important bigger picture, which is that 41% of transgender people attempt suicide at some point in their lives. That's nine times the national average. Nine times the national average. 78% of the transgender people who suffered physical or sexual violence at school reported suicide attempts. This is a, this is a vast majority. Among transgender people who became homeless because of bias against their gender identity, 69% said they tried to kill themselves. Out of those who'd been turned away by a doctor because of their gender identity, 60% uh, said they tried to kill themselves. So let's think about this for a second. You're transgender, you probably suffer from major body issues uh, with, and identity issues. No one acknowledges your identity. You're way more likely to be physically or sexually assaulted. You may be rejected by your family. You may find, have it, find it very difficult to get a job. You may be rejected by doctors. You may be rejected for housing. Uh, you're going to be stared at everywhere you go. You're going to be more afraid. Anyone who has trouble figuring out why transgender people would be more suicidal is a fucking moron. They're just not using their brain. A law has been uh, proposed by some advocates. It's called Leela's Law, and it would prohibit Christian trans conversion therapy. Hopefully it would also ban anyone trying to do trans conversion therapy. I've signed the petition to support that law. Uh, but I'd also like to add my own addition to that law, because uh, there was a part in Leela's note where she said, when I was 16, I realized that my parents would never come around, that I would have to wait until I was 18 to start any sort of transitioning treatment, which absolutely broke my heart. The longer you wait, the harder it is to transition. I felt hopeless that I was just going to look like a man in drag for the rest of my life. On my 16th birthday, when I didn't receive consent from my parents to start transitioning, I cried myself to sleep. So my question is, why did Lila even have to ask the permission of her parents to get this necessary medical procedure going. I would like to see a law that says that parents don't have this sort of absolute control over their children's lives to the points where it's, it's tantamount to child abuse. And this not only covers stuff like what happened to Leela, but all these kids who get sick and then their parents say, we're going to use faith healing. Bullshit. You know, there, there's such a thing as religious freedom, but when you start victimizing other people because of your religious freedom, then that should be put a stop to. I think the victim's rights outweigh your fucking religious rights. I guess that's pretty much all I have to say. I mean, actually, there was quite a bit more, but I don't want to take up all of your time. Uh, I hope that this video was enjoyable, informative, whatever else. If it was, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Support me by buying my various products that are available in the description section down below. Follow me on social media. Blah, 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 etc., etc., etc. I'm the Amazing Atheist. Peace the fuck out!